Welcome to the service of Harvest Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm uh, Reverend Jim Corston. Reverend Lee uh, is quarantining. Uh, he's healthy. I was speaking with him on, uh, on Friday. Uh, his daughter uh, had, has had a test, and so they're just wanting to make sure that uh, it's, everything's safe. So I'm happy to be here. I'm a military chaplain. Um, come from, hail from uh, Nova Scotia. Um, uh, orig well, originally actually from Nepean, and uh, my, folk, my, uh, my ancestors are from across the river. Um, and I actually have um, a cousin who's a member of this parish who I did not call to say that I would be here. <laughs> because I didn't want to put any pressure that if she wasn't feeling safe enough to come, that she would then come to, you know, support the family. Anyway, I'm very, very pleased to be here. Uh, our service is, uh, is the Holy Eucharist on this Harvest Thanksgiving. Um, please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Creator of the fruitful earth, you made us stewards of all things. Give us grateful hearts for all your goodness and steadfast wills to, do, to use your bounty well, that the whole human family, today and in generations to come, may with us give thanks for the riches of your creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the meeting. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow from flint rock, and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. Do not say to yourself, My power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks be to God. The properly appointed song for today is Psalm 65. We will recite it responsibly by the half verse. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you that hear prayer shall all flesh come. Our sins are stronger than we are. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. 
Thy holiness of your temple. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness. You make fast the mountains by your power. You still the roaring of the seas. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. You prepare the grain. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. You crown the year with your goodness. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Lord God, joy marks your presence. Beauty, abundance, and peace are the tokens of your work in all creation. Work also in our lives, that by these signs we may see the splendor of your love and praise you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The second reading. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. The one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to, to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us, for the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ, and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of, because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. St. Paul writes, the point is this, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do as they have made up their mind. The Festival of Harvest Thanksgiving has come around again this year, and on it, um, our thoughts are to turn to all of those things which we ought to be thankful for. It may be difficult, or there may be hurdles in thinking about that this year. We have not gathered on this Harvest Thanksgiving the way that we normally gather in parishes all across the country uh, to celebrate Harvest Thanksgiving. Normally, it is one of the largest uh, uh, congregations of the year. And it, while the, the bounty is placed in front of us here um, this morning uh, to celebrate the, the Thanksgivings that we, we have, uh, it may be difficult for us to think about those because of the restrictions that we live under now. We are, not unlike those ten lepers, outcasts in so many ways, un unable to, to touch and embrace, unable to, to feel those types of platonic intimacies, but intimacies all the same, that are so important for us as humans, so important for us, as people created by God. Notwithstanding all of that, we still have great privileges in, this, in our society, even during this time, compared to others around the world. None of us wonders about clean water. None of us, most of us, don't worry about whether or not we'll be fed. Us sitting here today have homes to live in that are warm even as the winter is, 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 is coming upon us. All of these things are, are things to thank God for. And yet as simple as these things are, I believe we all know that in the midst of the Thanksgiving, we often cannot overcome the burdens also that we Carry, which sometimes cloud our sight from, from seeing and remembering those gifts so simply. And so part of our work today, this morning, is to remember the gifts which we have received at God's hands through the last year and which we continue to have even today. It is to hold up these memories and examine them and see in them what God would have us see and not to imagine with our clouded minds 
to look intently at them and pray God would make known to us his working in them for us and for this world he so loves. It is for us not to take these proper thanksgivings for granted. It's not completely clear from our gospel reading why nine lepers who were healed at Jesus' direction did not go back to him and offer thanks. It is clear that the one which did was a foreigner, a Samaritan, a half-blood, someone theologically not correct. And it was this foreigner whom I have expected only to be turned away from Jesus from the very beginning. But he wasn't. And thanks came back. It may be that the other nine who were, who were outcast in their, from their own community still assumed that they had a right to such healing. And having received it, thought it was only their due. No thanks. No gratitude. No understanding of their part in God's gracious will for this world. Only a taking for grantedness of, what's, of what God's love can actually do. This day in our year marks for us a counterpoint to such an attitude. It is easy for us to take for granted what we have. It is easy for us to take for granted those things, those gifts, which our society even provides in difficult times. Things which, if we lost, we certainly would be the worst for. And it is easy, too, for us to take for granted all of those things which we learned in our religious education. God created the world and us in it in a way that we might have unspeakable joy. When we marred the world, the, that world, he sent his son, son to redeem us and it. When we turn away from him, neglect him, profane him, he still woos us as a lover, woos their beloved. These things are sometimes taken for granted by us. And so as much as it is taken for granted, there is work for us to do. And the work, the work begins with a few steps. In the 16th and 17th century, there was a man who many wrote to requesting, uh, seeking spiritual counsel. And in one letter that a woman wrote to Francis, this Francis de Salle, she asked his advice on enriching her own spiritual development. She was concerned that in all that she knew, was doing, it wasn't enough. She read the Holy Scriptures faithfully every day and meditated upon them. She read books about the devout life and put them into practice. And yet she felt she was behind. When Francis de Salle wrote back, he told her what we all know, that her progress in the spiritual life moves forward step by step and that she should not chide herself because she was not yet perfect. But she should realize, really remember, that the movement of her soul to an ever-increasing intimacy with God is a lifelong movement, not contained merely in a book, but found in her own willingness to know God's love for her more deeply. For his advice, which made her see that her life really was for, was for and in God, and not simply found in requirements fulfilled, she gave thanks to God. This harvest thanksgiving, we might all consider the harvest God has provided in our lives. St. Paul tells us the point is in how we sow and I would ask that you would sow the seeds of your thoughts 
into the bed of your hearts and memories to see what God has brought to life in you this past year. This is the time for us, even as we celebrate the harvest, the bounty of the fields, we ask ourselves, what in our own lives can be harvested from this past year? How have we grown? How, what do we know now? How do we love in a way differently today than we did a year ago that has been given and can be given to others? Harvest. Hard to harvest that love. love. If your mind is made up not to sow a seed in, in your memory, then how God has worked in your life will be taken for granted. That is to say, if you listen to my fine words, or not so fine words this morning, nod and walk out and forget it all, and not sow the seed of what, you're, of what the memory is, then you have taken God for granted. You have taken his love for granted. But if it is so, then you and I both will not be able to do anything but give thanks. This morning we celebrate this Holy Communion. While we celebrate with thanks Christ's offering of himself and death for the sake of our relationship with God, let us be mindful of all that God has provided for us. And let us give thanks to him for it and for himself. Let us come to this altar and make and holy communion with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand and let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. The communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us give thanks to our God, to God our Father, always and for everything, saying, We thank you, Lord. For the beauty and wonder of creation, we thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. We thank you, Lord. For our daily food, for our homes and families and friends. We thank you, Lord. For our minds to think and our hearts to love. We thank you, Lord. For health, strength, and skill to work, and for leisure to rest and play. We thank you, Lord. For those who are brave and courageous, patient and suffering, and faithful in adversity. We thank you, Lord. For all who pursue peace, justice, and truth. We thank you, Lord. For all the saints whose lives have reflected the light of Christ. We thank you, Lord. This week in our parish, we pray for Susan Martin, Sharon Brown, Don Bradley, Sharon We pray for the sick and those in need of healing. Michael, Peter, Brian, Rita, Diane, Robert, Laura, Heather, Joan. For these and all prayers, we thank you, Lord. My friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. 
He welcomes sinners and invites us to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry that we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you with all goodness. And keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's pray. Source of all life, the heaven and earth are yours, yet you have given us dominion over all things. Receive the symbols of our labor and love which we offer you this day in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image, male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them, and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroyed the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup 
Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all that eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and in Christ, and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat, whose many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of our hope, in this Eucharist we find the source of all your blessings. Nourish in these holy mysteries, may we with our lives give you continual thanks and praise. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask for a man. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you, and remain with you now and always. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Well, good morning, and so glad you could join us on this Thanksgiving morning. And we want to wish everybody a very happy Thanksgiving. With those of you who are here this morning, those who are wor worshiping with us online, it's been a tough year, as we all know, and uh, I, I know families aren't able to gather the way they want, but yet we are one greater family here, and uh, it, it, it's good to have this opportunity. I want to recognize the uh, flowers on the altar and uh, those who made specific donations for that, as well as uh, people who brought in various uh, canned goods and, uh, and, and other food as part of our decorating the church for Thanksgiving. The uh, food will go to the food bank after the service. A uh, couple of other things coming up. The first is, even while we're in the midst of COVID, uh, we've decided we've realized that we need to take some conscious actions to, to give people an opportunity to come together. So, assuming the weather is good next weekend, uh, we're going to try having a walk on the uh, Trans-Canada Trail, uh, and that will be leaving from, uh, from Main Street and heading west toward the observation station out in the marsh. And if you would like to join us, if you can join us, that would be great. And we'll keep our distance and all the rest of the things we need to do but the leaves are turning, and if it's, a, if it's a nice day, it's a great chance to get some fresh air. 
I, I hear vitamin D is really important in building, boosting the immune system. Uh, the other thing is that the uh, Wednesday evening prayers are continuing online at 7 o'clock. Uh, the details from Zoom login are in the parish emails. And uh, that evening prayer service is followed by a Bible study. We're currently working our way through the Gospel of Luke. And uh, happy to have you join for the prayers, for the Bible study, for both. If you want to get a copy of the background material, please contact the church office. The fundraising team is also continuing to collect recipes for a cookbook, and uh, they'd like to get all the submissions in by the end of November. <coughs> so that's it for the announcements for today, and uh, I, I wish you uh, a very happy Thanksgiving, uh, and please enjoy the rest of the weekend. Please stand. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve our risen Lord.